Hello everybody, my name is JCW and welcome back to the Max Cave Speedrun series. After hitting 200 below my level 3, I set a new challenge for myself. Maxing total level on a brand new account in the shortest gameplay time possible. The account has absolutely zero restrictions, so I can do whatever it takes to achieve my ultimate goal. Maxing within 35 days of playtime. Previously, for the fourth time, we are still working on 99 Slayer. The grind is taking quite a bit since the logout methods I use only get me about 40k an hour. This makes us a 300 hour grind. Considering the fact that the whole speedrun is less than 900 hours and this is the only skill I log out during, it's pretty wild, but I'm happy to say that I discovered something great since my last video. If you haven't seen my last video, I talked about the Crystal Halberd spec, which essentially, as you can see, it has an AoE attack where it can hit up to 10 monsters all in one tile. It's very good for tasks like these where I can stack the NPCs, but sometimes there's tasks where it's not really possible to stack everything together. That's where my bulwark comes in. But before we dive into what this does, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Here's an interesting fact. There are many different and unique characters in Hero Wars. We have cyborgs, aliens, vampires, even furries won't be disappointed. My personal choice is Chaba. Find your favorite champion in Hero Wars today. Jumping back into the bulwark, this badass can hit any NPCs that are nearby. It's not just limited to the enemies on one tile. So, if you think about this, if I'm hitting diagonals from afar on my speedrun account, they're going to attack me. This is why I always did diagonals in the lighthouse, because obviously I cannot log out if I'm being attacked. Thanks to one of my nerd friends, Tua, he thought of something I could do as an idea to make this a logout task, and it works pretty well. The reason I can do logout Crystal Halberd on the other tasks is because when the NPC is actively attacking somebody, it won't switch targets. With this in mind, I know it's pretty much impossible to put all the diagonals on one tile since there are some small ones and big ones. So the solution? It's pretty simple. Don't have all the diagonals attack one account, but rather have them attack two or even three accounts. Once all the diagonals are in combat and I finish running my other four accounts here, I can finally log in and bulwark all of them with no worries of being attacked. The XP per hour on screen is inaccurate since I just finished a Bloodfield task in this example. However, the rates I can expect here reach up to 150k Slayer and 600k Attack. If you compare this to Lighthouse Diagonals, which are non logout, and the method that I did up until now, this is about 25k an hour Slayer better, and a whole 300k an hour Attack better. One of my goals when I started Slayer was to ensure that I finished 99 in all melees when I finished 99 Slayer. However, after chitting Bloodvelds until level 88 range, I realized that there's a small chance I cut myself really close with my remainder Slayer XP versus melee. In all honesty, this task is mentally a pain to do, but I make myself do it as a way to catch up on combat XP just to ensure that I don't fall short. Every other melee method, which is literally only the Halberd spec, can only train strength and defense. The Halberd can train my attack, but it's on shared, so I have no way of only gaining 600k an hour attack XP. So the fact that I can do that with this just makes this method that much better. Right before I realized that I chinned way too much, I did end up going back to cooking during chinning. I do wish I did a lot more of this, but of course it's too late now. But here I am hitting 91 cooking through Slayer. If you're curious on how I'm doing with Slayer points in terms of skipping or not, the answer is I'm doing fan freaking tastic. Looking back, it should have been very easy to avoid struggling with points. But right now, I'm just about to hit my 200 task streak, putting me at 1.6k points. At this point, since I'm level 90 Slayer, it's about time to make a big decision. Some of the tasks that I do are decent, but not that great with all things considered. A great example is cow fights. I was always doing these as fast as possible with the bracelets to speed them up, because they are about 85 to 90k an hour Slayer, which honestly isn't that good when you consider logout methods. They also don't give much melee XP since I'm using a cannon. They were really only worth doing to ensure I had positive points throughout my Slayer grind. However, now that I have a lot of those points, I can finally make an executive decision to stop doing cow fights and sukas. From here on out, until I see myself running low on points again, I'm only going to be doing Ankus and Dark Beasts in my point tasks. Even though Dark Beasts are lower Slayer XP an hour than cow fights, they're more worth it to do because they are only a 2-3 minute task, whereas cow fights are about 10. Overall, this lets me spend more time at the better tasks. It's the same story with Ankus, they are a quick 2-3 minute task. From here on out, we should see a massive increase in our XP per hour, and we're not even at smoke devils yet. Remember when I mentioned that I think we overshot our range XP, and it's coming close to the melee XP? Well, funny thing, the same thing's happening with my mage XP. I think we're running short on magic, 
which honestly is even worse than running short on melee. So hopefully we'll figure something out with this skill. I'm not entirely worried about it, especially with the extra attack XP I'm getting from Dagonauts with the logout method, but for the time being, I'm doing Necrodols with Crystal Howard for the melee XP, and whenever I get a superior, I switch over to Mage. When we see my stats closer to the end of the video, I'll go more in depth about how close I'm going to be, since I don't want to spoil my stats at the moment. But here's 94 magic. And of course, never lucky. I didn't even get an imbued heart from the superior. You may see my alt fire surging some death spawns. I do this just as a way to slightly increase my slayer XP an hour, but it's not that huge. I missed a lot of levels recently, but here's 95 strength and 2175 total level, which means at this point we're only 102 levels off of max. So close, boys. This game is great! Hero Wars is a world of 6 unique modes and over 100 million players. You can play alone or with friends. Also, be sure to check out Titans mode, become a legend. Play Hero Wars now. Just to explain the killing of death spawns on the alt a little better, the death spawns are monsters that the Necrodils can spawn on a random chance every time they hit you. The Crystal Halberd can hit up to 10 targets on one tile, but that's it. So, if there are 6 death spawns and 7 Necrodils, Three monsters aren't getting hit. In theory, if my see how is not hitting a Necreal, I'm kind of wasting time on the account. On the other hand, it is more beneficial for my melee XP to hit the death spawns, especially since I'm running short. But overall, it's still better to have less death spawns since Slayer is the main focus. Ideally, I want my Crystal Halberd to be hitting the Necreals every time. In theory, if a Necreal doesn't take any damage because the death spawn took a hit for it, I'm losing that potential damage towards my Slayer XP, effectively dropping my XP per hour. So this is why you see my alt fire surging them sometimes. And now here we are, hitting the halfway mark of 92 Slayer. The XP rate on screen is what I mean by it's going to be significantly higher since level 90, since I'm finally allowing myself to start and use up my points. We don't even have smoke devils yet, and we're already casually getting 148k an hour over a pretty decent period of time. Here's the halfway mark of 92 attack along with a complete separate session that I'm still getting about the same rate as last clip, 149k an hour over a decent period of time. Remember though, even though my rate says 300k gain and 150k an hour, this session realistically took me about 6-7 to seven hours of IRL time. I guess in a way, I did get a lot of Anku and Dark Beast tasks, however, I'm just now approaching my 250th task. The milestones for extra points are every 50, 100th, and 250th task. The coolest thing is since I hit my 200th task, I knew that in 50 tasks I would be gaining a lot of points anyway, so I wasn't even expecting to see that much negativity in points despite skipping other tasks. So somehow, and I don't know if it was good RNG or the fact that I got a lot of Dark Beasts and Ankus, but finishing my 250 task got me an extra 525 points, putting me even right back and even over the points that I had at my 200th task, despite skipping a lot more. So now I'm chilling at 1.7k points and 93 Slayer. Basically, I'm way too comfortable with points right now. With Smoke Devils unlocked and being more than halfway to 99, at this point, I may even be able to skip the 2-3 to three minute tasks. However, that will come in next video as I'm still planning exactly what I want to do. This clip's just a quick refresher that to skip tasks, I have to tell you with Slayer Ring and NPC Contact again. Not ideal, but still better in my opinion than doing Dragon Slayer 1 for the diary, unlocking Black Dragon tasks. Here's 93 attack, and a treat for you guys. The XP rate on screen is actually accurate for this task, as I finally got a diagonal task as my first task of the day, where I didn't mind resetting my tracker. In the past couple clips, you saw me having a lot of fun keeping my tracker going, and seeing a consistent 140 to 150k an hour over a long period of time. So that's why I haven't really been able to get an accurate count of XP here until just now. With this, I want to take a look at our melee stats and Slayer level. With it being important that I hit 99 attack, strength, and defense before Slayer, an easy way for me to calculate how it's looking is to add all the stats XP and divide it by 3. If it's above Slayer, then I'm in good shape. I'm currently 93 attack, 96 strength, and 87 defense, along with 93 Slayer. If I take the exact XP and divide it by 3, these are the totals I get. My total melee XP is 7.2, while total Slayer is 7.6, leaving me 400k behind. Being only 400k behind, this is easily salvageable. However, when you bring magic into the equation, I also need 5 mil magic XP. So yeah, that needs to be figured out. I think worst case scenario would be just to do a lot of neck to catch up, 
And honestly, since my 200th task, I actually made this margin a lot better looking, since I was able to skip hellhounds, cow fights, and all that garbage. When trying to gain as much combat XP as possible, I don't really want to use my cannon since it lowers my combat XP gained and it gives me range XP, which is essentially worthless due to the range method we're going to be using in the future. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Here's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and 5 awesome heroes to start dominating in this game right away? Too slow? The answer is in the link in the description below. Play Hero Wars with my link and you'll receive all of these benefits immediately. What are you guys waiting for? I'll see you there soon. And thank you to Hero Wars for sponsoring. I just got assigned 10 Dark Bees, so I'll show you guys why this task is generally hard to skip, because it's so fast. Using Expeditious Bracelets, I have a 25% chance of killing an NPC and having it count twice towards my Slayer task. So with average RNG, I only need to kill 7 of these right now. Basically, I use my ult to run me Dragon Claw specs, otherwise I just sit quietly and let my scythe do the work for 2.5 minutes. It's a very quick and comfy way to get points, especially because getting here only takes me 15 seconds as well, since it's just a teleport on the Slayer Ring away. So yeah, it's been a while since the last episode, so let's see what kind of gains we had since then. On the left are the stats from last time, and on the right are my current stats. We gained a whole 5 Slayer levels, or about 3.5 mil XP, which is quite a lot of gaming in my opinion. Here's an easier visual to see our gains alongside the current EHP. Being at 770 EHP, we're now over 80% of the way to max, and I promise you guys that because Slayer is taking a while, once we're done with this skill, we will zoom so fast. Something else I'd like to drop so you guys aren't disappointed next week, I have been showing my playtime every 5 episodes since the beginning of the series. However, next episode, number 25, I will not be showing it. I want to keep it suspenseful until the very end, so next time you guys see how much time I have played, I will be wearing a max cape. That's all I have for this episode, so TY everybody for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time, especially for a big update on the melee and mage XP ratio to Slayer. With all of that, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.